Hi, this is another Ask Augustine. Today I'm going to talk about wolf tones. Um, what to do about wolf tone, about a, about a wolf on an instrument. As we say, it sounds pretty funny to people who are not string players, but um, anyone who plays a string instrument is familiar with this fact that sometimes there is a, or usually there is a note on an instrument that sounds kind of distorted, that's very, very hard to speak. And that's what we refer to as wolf, because sometimes it can kind of howl. It can be like a howling sound. So a wolf tone, it's actually caused um, by the fact that that tends to be the, the note at which the instrument itself rings. And that causes this kind of funny um, phenomenon of interference. And is the re it's, it's actually the instruments that are really good, uh, really powerful acoustically, tend to have stronger wolf tones. And actually most great violins have a wolf to some extent, but some have a um, for, with some instruments it's a bigger problem than with others. It changes a little bit based on the weather, so when the weather is humid I find the wolf tone is a little more prevalent and when the weather is dry it's less of an issue. Um, and there are things you can do that the luthier can do in adjustment, um, raising, changing the tension of the instrument a little bit to, around to, to um, reduce the amount of wolfiness <laughs> that you get. Uh, but uh, there are drawbacks to that because I actually have found that those adjustments and setups that sound the best for an instrument, where the instrument really sounds the loudest, the fullest, the, you know, the warmest, tend to be the ones where the wolf is actually also particularly strong. It's, it's often a sign that the instrument is really actually ringing very powerfully. So I play on a Guarneri del Gesù for the last few months and it has quite a prominent wolf tone on the B natural. Actually a lot of del Gesù's, or usually del Gesù's, actually have it on the C natural, but this one has it on the B natural. And sometimes doesn't want to quite speak when I if I do a swell on it, the pitch bends down and starts to kind of like you know sound sound a little bit like a wolf. Um, so whenever I play that note, it's a little bit dangerous. The notes around it are totally fine. The G string is really beautiful on this instrument, but this note it's always slightly dangerous. So what are some of the adjustments that I make to make sure that the wolf doesn't become too much of an issue? If I play a passage that's not too intense, but that features the B natural on the G string, I try to establish the sound before I reach the wolf tone, uh, get the violin ringing nicely, and then I switch to the wolf tone without stopping those vibrations and back off very slightly. I can demonstrate with this passage from uh, Sarazate Introduction and Tarantel. With, uh... <laughs> establishing the sound and now I don't stop and restart I don't go which would make it a little more wolfy I, I basically switch pitches uh, but keep the violin ringing through it and then back off very slightly when I get to the wolf tone which means a little less bow a little less weight with the, on the arm As you get used to an instrument, you get kind of a feeling for how the wolf tone will react and what might be too much for it. But of course, you don't want to be careful all the time when you play that note. There are times when it needs to be played loud and strongly and with confidence. And uh, sometimes you have to take actually the opposite approach. Um, you actually have to kind of push through the wolf and play with a very focused sound. Slow bow speed, lot of weight very close to the bridge. So later in this piece. So again here, I establish the sound and play the wolf softer. But of course the first one, I, I have to hit quite hard but I'm careful not to play with fast bow speed, so that would not work. Uh, slow bow speed, close to the bridge, 
a lot of weight, very narrow vibrato. The thing with the vibrato is, if uh, the kind of vibrato that sounds good on other notes, on the wolf, because it's like, oh, it, <laughs> it's, uh, it easily overwhelms it. Basically, everything you do on the wolf, you have to do like slightly less, because it is a note that on the violin, the reason why it's wolfy uh, is, is because it's the note at which the violin rings particularly loudly, so, so much so that it overwhelms the instrument, kind of causes this distortion. So, um, in order to get this kind of, so the kind of motion that here would sound like this, on the wolf notes on, it's actually quite a bit louder. I often notice that uh, on, on these home recordings that I'm making, when I look at the sound waves later on, uh, that always the peaks, uh, like the loudest point of the recording, is often when I'm playing the B natural somewhere. Uh, it's just like when it <laughs> when it hits hits one of the loudest points in the pieces, and sometimes not a note that I was actually uh, putting a lot of uh, putting a lot of emphasis onto, but it just the violin just really um, suddenly starts ringing like crazy. Uh, so it's actually a good thing, but it be, it's too much of a good thing once you play that note on the G-string. So wolf tones are something that we have to get used to, and uh, we, we kind of have to learn to live with, and they're part um, of a lot of great instruments, they just come with a wolf tone. And even though you can reduce the wolf a little bit, sometimes you have to if it's totally out of control, the adjustment of the instrument can reduce it. It will never go away completely and actually I think often the adjustments where the violin sounds particularly beautiful and strong overall are the ones where the wolf tone is pretty strong. So um, you have to kind of decide just how much of an issue it is but you can get used to it and make a lot of little adjustments um, and you just need to remember when you get to that note uh, you, need to, you need to kind of have a plan for, for, for what to do um, so that the wolf doesn't sound too wolfy. I hope that's helpful and I'll see you next time.